Mais sinon, merci beaucoup d'avoir regardé. Ciao, ciao, French Learner. Alex, it's listen to music, but it's écouter la musique. It's ask someone, but demander à quelqu'un. How do I know which verbs are like English and which aren't? What's the secret to matching the preposition to the verb? It's frustrating, I know. If only there were a rule to follow to help us shortcut the process of storing all these verbs and their prepositions in our head so we can speak with grammatical confidence. Alors, Alex, you tell them. I just, I just can't bear to. Yep, unfortunately, as far as I know, there's no rule, there's no secret. You just have to know them. That's right. However, before you click off of the video, French learner, we have an invaluable tip for you that will make choosing your prepositions much easier and have a big knock-on effect for your sentence building skills at more advanced stages. Du coup, si vous êtes prêts, allez, c'est parti! Salut tout le monde, moi c'est Alex and thanks to the power of science fiction and imagination, we're able to do this video today with the help of an Alex from another universe. So Alex, tell our audience what they need to hear. Yeah, hi everyone. So yes, while there is no hard and fast rule for knowing as soon as you come across a verb, which preposition it is followed by, if any, it's still a fantastic idea to when you learn a new verb, you learn it together with its preposition if there is one, rather than see them as two separate elements. This makes it really easy to then conjugate in any tense, past, present, future, because you're no longer hampered by having to choose the preposition as well, since the preposition is going to be the same no matter the tense. And knowing the verb with its preposition in one block also really helps you later on when it comes to converting the preposition and object to a pronoun like en, i, lui, leur, le, la, les, etc. Yes, we tend to see the verb itself as the thing that should be learned, but since the preposition that it introduces is so important to building sentences confidently with that verb, you should see them as one entry in your mental database or file cabinet. And this mindset shift will change so much for you. You see, the more we see something and use something, the more our brain internalizes that pattern and makes it really easy for us to use and understand without even thinking about it. This is how children learn. Now, most English speakers, they very quickly get used to saying je peux. They know to mix je with peux. Je peux, je peux, je peux. And next comes joining je peux to another verb. And English speakers, again, very good at just saying je peux boire, je peux manger, je peux dire, because it's just something they have to use and see a lot. And this is just the same process with the preposition on just a bigger scale. Once you internalize it, you can use it without a second thought. It is just second nature. Absolutely. So the solution to making your verb and preposition decisions is to get lots of exposure and lots of practice with specific combinations. Many verbs have many combinations. So once you know the combinations, you can confidently build your sentences. To choose just one simple example, the verb essayer requires a preposition before another verb and no preposition before a noun. Word reference is really useful for this, by the way, because it lays out the various structures of a verb. Essayez de maîtriser les prépositions, to try to master prepositions. Essayez cette paire de chaussures, to try or to try on this or that pair of shoes. So there's essayer de when it's followed by a verb and essayer followed by the noun with no preposition and essayer followed by no preposition when the next thing is a noun to either try something or to try on something. Yeah, and demander is followed by a when the object is a person and there's no preposition when it's the thing you're looking for. Demander au patron to ask the boss. Demander un coup de main to ask for some help. And these, of course, go together in one sentence. Demander un coup de main au patron. Demander un coup de main au patron. 
There are obviously thousands of verbs and thousands of combinations, but the point is to start to consciously group the verb with whether or not there is a preposition, what that preposition is, if there is one, and then what goes after it. Is it a noun? And is that noun a person or a thing? Is it another verb? Or indeed, is it nothing? Because sometimes a verb takes no objects at all. But Alex, in practical terms, how should our viewers go about integrating this into their French activities? Très bonne question, Alex. Well, the first step is a mental one. You need to make the switch in your mind from seeing the verb as just the verb, like essayer, demander, permettre, whatever, to seeing the verb as verb plus preposition. Essayer de, demander à, permettre de, and keep these as blocks in your mind. Yeah, and the next step is to integrate it into your input tasks of reading and listening to things. When you see a new verb, immediately go into detective mode to look at what comes after it. Is there a preposition followed by an object? Is there no preposition but still an object? Or does the verb have neither a preposition nor an object? Sometimes you won't be sure. That's okay. Move on. There's plenty more where that came from. The sponsor of today's video, LingoPi, is a great way to hone this new skill that you must train every day if it's going to become second nature. Because LingoPi is a video on demand platform like Netflix, it has tons of series to watch in your target language of French. But it's better than Netflix because it's built with French learners like you and I in mind. With the script next to the video and the subtitles activated, you can pay attention to the word order and more specifically analyze the grammatical structure of verbs. Now what we're going to see in the clip of this show is a few examples in quick succession of verbs with objects and we can see immediately what the prepositions are between verb and object. Tout ça parce qu'on aurait 15 minutes de retard sur le planning. Mais, euh, bon, d'accord, c'est bon. Tu viens d'arriver, tu as besoin de te sentir bien, tu as besoin de te sentir un petit peu arrivé en Suisse, tout ça. Et... Ah non, 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 non. Miguel, pas possible. On est tous les deux responsables du temps qu'on passe ensemble. On est tous les deux responsables du temps qu'on passe ensemble. So here we see that it's the verb être, on est, on est, with some extra information here, tous les deux, but then it's responsable, on est tous les deux responsables, and it's du temps, on est tous les deux responsables du temps. In English, it would be we're responsible for, right? But in French, it's de, and combined with the le of temps, it's du. So we see immediately that it's être responsable de quelque chose, or de quelqu'un. So then we memorize that it's être responsable de, and we remember that as one block. On est tous les deux engagés dans le même planning. On est tous les deux engagés dans le même planning. So again, verb être with the subject on, and then engagé dans quelque chose. Quoi? Le même planning. Engagé dans quoi? Dans le même planning. So you again remember that it's on est engagé, or être engagé plus dans plus noun, dans quelque chose. Tu peux pas toujours avoir le rôle du mec passif qui suit le programme. Tu peux pas toujours avoir le rôle du mec passif qui suit le programme. So it's the verb suivre here, plus a noun, plus its object, suivre le programme. So there's no preposition here, it's not au programme, it's not du programme, it's not avec le programme, it's not dans le programme, it's suit le programme. So here we know it's a direct verb, suivre quelque chose. So then you're always going to remember it's suivre without preposition followed by its object. So that show was called Welcome to Our Home, but LingoPi has a huge library of French language content from France and some shows from Switzerland, Belgium, etc. as well. Subtitles are interactive, so you can click them, get definitions, pronunciations, and translations, and you can show both languages, one language, or neither to really test yourself. Unfortunately, it often doesn't group the verb and the preposition together into one entry, so you're on your own with that, but I say that the more you do yourself, the more your brain works on French, so this is actually an advantage, hidden in plain sight. Bref, if you're a Netflix subscriber, you can also use LingoPi's free browser extension to have the power of its language learning features directly integrated into your favorite Netflix shows. Get started with LingoPi today after this video via the link in the video description and get 70% off a lifetime subscription. I'm so grateful for LingoPi's continued support for French in Plain Sight and what we do here. Let's get back to the other ways to get these verbs and their prepositions to stick. 
If you're a highlighter who likes to highlight new words and phrases when you're reading, highlight the whole phrase or clause for maximum context and a reminder to your brain that this verb goes with this preposition. Yeah, and this goes doubly for creating flashcards. Write full clauses or even full sentences and repeat, repeat, repeat. The more times your brain sees elle a reproché à son père d'avoir perdu son nounours, you're going to create this tight association between reproché and à quelqu'un and even de plus verb and not get attached to, oh, it's blame someone in English with no preposition. You'll just be attached to the French structure and you won't have to go via an English translation. And if you read a lot of articles or websites in French, then you can even use a tool like duo cards to create flashcards from the text that you find in articles. For example, on this website, I can highlight Lizarazu qui continue d'apporter son expertise and then I can just right click that text and click on the duo cards, opens up a new tab. I've saved, I'm about to save a flashcard of that text and I see not only continue, it's followed by de plus verb. So I can remember that, continue de plus verb. I also see apporter plus son expertise and there's no preposition between these two. So that's a really easy way, but you can do this in your book and just being very present and aware. This video isn't sponsored by Duo Cards, but that's a really handy feature. There's a link to that in the video description. You just need an account, a free account, and then the Chrome extension to save text from websites. Really, really handy. When you're writing sentences or stories in a journal, I commend you if you push yourself to only look up words in a translator when you really need to. However, when it comes to verbs, give the translator the English verb plus preposition plus object so that you get the correct French combination. The more context you give the translator, the more accurate of a translation you're going to get by the translator in general. Totally. For example, if I'm writing about listening to the radio in the car and I need to look up the verb listen and I go to deep L and write listen, I get écouter. Happy with my new word, I then go back to my journal entry to finish the sentence. I'm probably going to write j'écoute à la radio dans la voiture because in English it's listen to something. To start untraining myself from this association, I should write into deep L, listen to the radio. That's enough. It gives me écouter la radio. I've then, without even actively studying the grammar rule, planted the seed in my brain that écouter doesn't require a preposition. I go back to my journal and finish off the sentence myself. So let translators help you with more than just individual words, but sentence grammar too. But don't let it write your entire sentence for you. Remember, let your brain do some of that work and it will pay off in the future. No, that's right. Then guys, it's just about applying this to all the verbs and the combinations. But trust me, it's a habit that has saved me countless weeks. The more you do it, the more you start to feel when a combination is right. That's the sign that you've completely internalized it. It's a great, great feeling. Tout à fait. And knowing the combinations by heart makes choosing object pronouns way easier, bien plus facile. Many learners struggle to know if it's lui or le and also struggle to choose between a, de or no preposition. That leads to awkward moments in conversations, doesn't it? Now, while you have to go through this manual process of learning the grammar rules, you can make it easier by learning which verbs go with which prepositions in one step. If you don't hesitate to say it's je pense au fête de fin d'année, then it's way easier to say j'y pense when you learn the rules for the pronouns because the first step is second nature for you. You've got one less thing to worry about. It's just habit. I hope that makes sense. So to recap, there's no secret to knowing which verb takes which prepositions. You just learn them over time and eventually you get a feeling, which is kind of like magic, for the combinations. But by consciously staying alert to the different combinations while reading and looking up sentences in translators, for example, you associate prepositions to verbs in your mental database. Use word reference to see the different combinations for a verb. Very, very handy. Voila, voila. Thank you so much, Alex, for sharing the stage with me today. I think the audience appreciated your help the other week, so I wanted to have you back. Ça me fait plaisir, Alex. It's actually quite chilly over in your universe at the moment. All right.
Sorry about that, I guess. <laughs> anyway, guys, I'm actually applying this tip that we've told you about in this video to my beginner, very beginner, Danish studies right now. And I'm logging my observations of the process over on Instagram every single day. If you'd like to follow along and help keep me accountable, I'll put the account name in the description of the video. I'm sure you can apply it to your French. That's it for now. À la prochaine francophone. Bon français. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao.